Hey everyone, time to get flexible today. We're going to dive into Flexbox, which is a CSS concept or a display type like block or inline block, which makes designing websites really, really easier. Basically, it's a concept where the container itself, which is defined as a flex box, will align its children, so all elements within this container, in a way we specify and which allows us to really, well, flexible position all those items. And what we had to do in the past with floats and clear fixes and all kind of hacks and stuff is really, really easier with Flexbox. And so let's just get into it. As you can see, I got something prepared here on Plunker. It's just a basic HTML document and I get a container here with four elements, other divs in this case, inside it. These two boxes are identical and I will play around with the bottom one and I, we can always see the comparison to the top one. Now, in our style.css, both containers are declared as flex elements and that means they are flex boxes, so to say. And we need to set display flex to be able to use all the fun flex stuff on any items within them as well as the container itself, otherwise this will not work. Now the first thing I'll show you is a property called flex direction. And whilst what this property does is set the direction by which these elements will be ordered. So right out of the box the flex direction is row and that means that these elements appear in columns in one row, so to say. It's one row. So if I set this to row, nothing will change. Now we also have row reverse, which means that the ordering is reversed. And now we let all elements start at the right of our row and flow to the left. So you can see the comparison to the normal row at the top. As you might be able to think, we not only got row, we also got column with one L for better fitting. And as you can see, column will change it in that way that we only have one column and all elements will be stacked in rows within that column. And as you might have already guessed, we also got row uh, column reverse, which is basically the same as row reverse just in the column. So with flex direction, we're really able to control the flow of our elements within a container and do easy reordering and stuff like this. I will just set it back to row for the moment. And now I will change something in our index.html. And I will add some additional items. Okay, so I now added some items and as you can see, now the whole container is filled. And we still have one row, right? Now we can add flex wrap, wrap to it. And this will make it so that no longer will everything shrink like it is the case here, but each block will contain its true dimensions and instead the elements will wrap. So in the top, we got the case that Flexbox will automatically shrink down our elements so they fit in the container while in the bottom it does not shrink anymore because we allow it to actually wrap. Now obviously we can also set it to no wrap and get the behavior from before so the standard is no wrap. We also got wrap reverse and as you can see 
this will reverse the ordering. So now number one is in the bottom left and then we go to the right until there is no space for number five to the right here and then it will be placed above. So I'm not sure how often you're going to use wrap reverse but you can, it's there. Now these two properties can also be written combined in just the one property, flex flow, which allows us to specify first the direction, row, and then if it is allowed to wrap or not. So I will just put it back to no wrap for the moment. Now I'm just going to edit it back so that we have a little bit of extra space available. Just like that. And now what if you want the content not to be stacked to the left, but to stretch out over the whole area? That's no problem with Flexbox. We can just add justify content to it. And then we got several options here. The default is flex start. That's why nothing changed. We can change it to flex end, which will push it up to the right, to the end of the container. But we also get the possibility to set it to center. Now we got equal margins to the left and right. We could also set it to space between, which will uh, align it to the very left and very right, but leave equal margins between the elements. And we also, and this is the last possible value, have space around. Now this makes it that the first and last element aren't exactly aligned to the left and right, but instead that everything is nicely spaced out. So this is a really cool feature and I see that being used very often in the future because with Justify Content you're really able to create cool layouts, flexible layouts, nice navigation bars and don't have to use all those floats and stuff which might uh, more than often mess up anything in your layout. So that is a really cool feature. I will just get rid of it so that we go back to our default. And um, let me show you another cool feature, which is align items. So we just got justify content, which aligns or which is spaces the elements out in the, in the width of our container, so to say. Oh, and that is very important too. It's only the width because we got a flex flow of rows. If we were to have a column flow, then if we go back to justify content and set it to flex end, it's no longer to the right but to the bottom. So everything that was right for the horizontal dimension when we had row as direction will now be transformed to the vertical direction when we set the direction to column. Now back to row and align items. Now align items allows us to specify how these elements will use the space they got in a vertical dimension or put in other word, words how they will stretch out to the top and bottom if we have a direction of row or to the left and right if we have a direction of column. So by default we have a value of stretch which means stretch out fill all the space you got. But we can set it to flex start which means no only take your height and if we go back here and increase the height like, like that, we can see, okay, this one is higher than the other ones. We also have flex end, which pushes it to the bottom. We get center. And we got 
baseline. Baseline means it's aligned at the baseline of the text inside the content. So as you can see, the difference to flex start is that we got this little margin at the top here for the smaller containers because we're aligning here on the numbers and not on the top of our boxes. Now with justify content and align items as well as the two flex directions, row and column, we got a lot of possibilities to align and justify items and to really play around. And that is what makes Flexbox really cool and yeah, what it name says, flexible. Now I just added two new boxes, five and six, set the wrapping back to allow wrapping and also set align items to stretch so that in this case the height of all items takes all the available space. Now I did this to show you another property named align content. Align content works the following way. We can also set flex start here. And that means all items should be pushed up to the top. And as you can see, stretch does not work anymore because this kind of overrides it and tells the item, items how they should align, in this case vertically, because always remember we got a direction of row. If we change it to column, got the same picture horizontally. We can also set it to flex end, which will align it to the bottom of our container. And we got also center stretch space around space between. So this is equivalent of justify content just for the other axis where justify content would make sure that everything is well justified and spaced out in the direction we specified here. So in one row, for example, align content will do the same for the other axis. So we got a direction of row, align content will take care of the spacing in the column. And vice versa, if we had column here, then align content would do the spacing in the row, whereas justify content would take care of the column. So we got align and justify content. Space between. So this one is row axis because of row direction. And this one is the column axis and also only because of row direction. So this is really important that you don't get these mixed up, but together you can make really cool things. So that's it for the container flex classes. And in the next video, we're going to have a look at the children flex properties, because remember that everything we did in this video was just inside the container class. So all the flex properties we added and, and, and changed were part of the container. And we didn't touch the children yet, but there are some flex properties which have to be specified on the children, on the individual boxes within a flex container to work. And we will look at this in the next video. See you.